This is the Mag Core Liquid i240, the newest in the series of AIOs from MSI. And right off the bat, it's obvious that the designers took their time in creating this. The shape of the cooler block and the infinity mirror give the cooler a unique and high-end looking design, considering it costs just $99 on Newegg right now. Overall, the looks of the cooler are sleek and refined, and the infinity mirror and fans have controllable RGB that doesn't require any additional software. With other features like pre-installed fans, a cover for your cables, this AIO could even be clean enough to work with some Project Zero PC builds. Let's move on to some performance aspects. While MSI does not claim a specific wattage in terms of how much heat capacity this can pull out of your CPU, they do highlight some features that will improve the efficiency of the cooler. While MSI does not claim a specific cooling capacity in watts, they do highlight some features that should improve the performance of this cooler. First, the 50 millimeter copper plate features 0.1 millimeter micro channels to increase the surface area for the coolant to soak up all of that heat. And a newly optimized 3400 RPM pump located right here on the cold channel of the cooler block is designed to reduce vibration and create smooth flow because the vortices and cavitation, aka air in the fluid, is the killer of cooling efficiency. They estimate that the average noise level from the pump is a mere 10 decibels. So this should be a super quiet running AIO. The two pre-installed fans are able to create 70.7 CFM of airflow over the radiator fins and are expected to last for over 30,000 hours. And lastly, the whole AIO draws a minuscule nine watts under full load, which means this is not gonna add any significant increase to your energy bill or use up much of the power available from your power supply. Before we move into looking at the accessories, we need to address the elephant in the room. In 2022 and 2023, MSI experienced pervasive issues with their AIOs. First in 2022, they were forced to issue a recall due to failures caused by sediment buildup in their cooling channel. This resulted in a massive drop in heat dissipation from the cooler. Then again in 2023, MSI cooler pumps had a defect which caused cavitation, leading to pumps causing excessive noise when spinning above 1600 RPM, which for this pump is about half of its full speed. So I think I can speak for everyone when I say I really hope that MSI has learned from these failures and improved their design and created a high quality, robust cooler that will last the life of your PC. Opening up the box, the simplicity of this AIO really benefits from two things. First, the fans are pre-installed, which means you have eight less bolts to deal with. The second is that MSI designed a single mounting bracket that works for both AM4 and AM5, as well as Intel's LGA 1700 socket, so there's no extra brackets for each different socket. It's all covered by the single bracket. And when you get everything out of the box, it is nicely organized into this little tray, which has labels for every single group of components, and this nice little QR code, which will take you to MSI's installation guide to help you install the cooler into your system. Thanks to the intelligent design by MSI and how simple they made their mounting system, I was able to put this into my PC in just nine minutes. And that was with zero familiarity, practice, or even looking at the installation guide from MSI. So far, based on their performance claims and the ease of installation, this is looking like an incredible AIO. Now that we've got the AIO installed, the most important part, obviously, besides the RGB, is how does it perform? To do that, we're going to compare this AIO to two coolers that I've used in my old gaming PC. First is a Thermalright Assassin, which costs just $18. And second is the Arctic Freezer 2 360 millimeter AIO. We're going to test sound levels. We're gonna do a CPU all core stress test. We'll do a CPU plus GPU stress test just to see how well it performs with extra heat being generated in the case. So let me run those tests and we'll get right back. All right, let's take a look at the results. We're gonna put them on a slide up here so you guys can see them too. They're all pretty similar with the air cooler coming in just a little bit quieter than the others, but both of the AIOs came in very similar to each other in terms of the max decibels that my microphone heard. So it's relatively on par with competitors. Let's move on to the Cinebench performance because this is where it starts to get interesting. You'll notice that the Arctic 360 and the MSI i240 averaged about 179 watts for the entirety of the Cinebench run, and they both had almost identical peak and average temperatures. Actually, they had exactly identical peak and average temperatures. 
Now, here's where the interesting discrepancy is. The thermal right had a much higher power output at 190 watts, but it also had a much higher temperature at 85 degrees C. Now, this is something that, if you don't know much about electronics, it might not be quite so obvious, but as somebody who works with battery technology, this is actually something that's pretty common. As batteries and other electronics get hotter, the internal resistance of them goes down, which means it's actually able to draw more power more easily. So it's not that surprising that the thermal right was able to pull a little bit more power since it didn't actually thermal throttle. And then let's move on to where I ran a Cinebench test while also running Fermark at 1440p. Which means the GPU is creating a bunch of heat adding to the amount of heat inside of the PC case and generally making the CPU cooler's job harder. You'll see that again the MSI i240 and the Arctic Freezer were very similar. Part of the discrepancy is that the Arctic 360 had to mount on the front of my case because it's too big to mount on top. So it was actually drawing in fresh air versus the MSI, which is pulling air from within the case and exhausting it out. So with that in mind, I would say that these temps would be almost identical if they were in the exact same setup, which is on me. I kind of forgot that the Arctic 360 only fits on the front of my case, but both were pulling around 180 watts and they both had very similar temperatures. So if you forget about the fact that the thermal right somehow pulled more power from my CPU than is actually listed on the specs, well, let's just look at its comparison between the Arctic 360 and the MSI. So both coolers, they were averaging about the same temperatures, not limiting our CPU power at all. And whereas the Arctic has a 360 millimeter AIO with three fans pulling across it, MSI did that with just two fans and a 240 millimeter AIO. So if you ask me, I would say the performance of this new AIO from MSI is pretty incredible. So, now that we've seen the design, we've installed it in a PC, and we know its performance capabilities, I think it's time for our final verdict. Is the MSI Mag Core Liquid i240 worth it? Yes. I honestly think that if MSI has learned from their previous failures and redesigned this in a way to avoid them, then this could fill the hole that Deepcool left behind in the US market. It looks incredible. The performance is equal to that of a 360 millimeter AIO from just a couple years ago, and it's only $100. Enough said.